Good afternoon. A warm welcome to everyone to this fourth session of the International Climate Summit 2021, focused on powering India's hydrogen ecosystem that is being held in New Delhi on 3rd September 2021 as a precursor to COP26. This session, convened virtually, is devoted to the topic, setting up of centers of excellence in hydrogen. I'm Ambassador Ajay Malhotra, the, the session moderator. Retired from the Indian Foreign Service, I have long been associated with energy, environment, and linked development issues, even participating in the first UN conference on new and renewable sources of energy convened in Nairobi in August 1981, over four decades ago. We have traveled far since then, and the global demand for energy too has grown by leaps and bounds. This has been accompanied by a growing recognition of the urgent need to tap into greener and renewable energy sources. The IPCC 6 assessment report, Working Group 1, released on 9th August 2021, brought out the importance of replacing fossil fuels by alternate energy sources and doing so on a war footing. And green hydrogen as a clean fuel presents itself as a most promising alternative. Indeed, India's geographical location, climatic conditions, and variety of abundant renewable energy sources like solar and wind make it eminently suitable to emerge as a major global hub for clean hydrogen production and export. I will highlight a few points to provide context to our session today. Firstly, in November 2020, Terry and the Norwegian energy company Greenstat Hydrogen India Private Limited signed an MOU to cooperate on research and thought leadership to accelerate the introduction of hydrogen technology in India. One of that MOU's objectives is to establish a Norwegian center of excellence on hydrogen in India and discussions on it are underway. The MOU also required both organizations to focus on hydrogen applications in city public transport and in powering river navigation. Second, as a precursor to the World Sustainable Development Summit 2021, Terry had launched on 16 December 2020 a report titled The Potential Role of Hydrogen in India, Harnessing the Hype. It pointed out that by 2030, the cost of green hydrogen from renewable energy will fall more than 50% and it will start to compete with hydrogen from fossil fuels. Thirdly, on 19 February 2021, a statement of intent was signed between a major public sector unit, Indian Oil, and Greenstat Hydrogen India, Private Limited, to set up a center of excellence on hydrogen. Indeed, in July this year, Indian Oil also announced it will build India's first green hydrogen plant at its Mathura refinery. And from the private Indian private sector, the chairman of Reliance, reaffirmed today morning at this summit that the company would aggressively implement major green hydrogen investments. Fourthly, in a very important visionary step, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched on August 15 this year, a national hydrogen mission, emphasizing that green hydrogen will play a crucial role in helping India mitigate climate change. He visualized India becoming a global hub for green hydrogen production and exports and inspiring a clean energy transition the world over. Fifth, a fortnight ago, Terry launched with Prime Metals Technologies Austria and Siemens India, a report on green steel through hydrogen direct reduction, which examines the hydrogen direct reduction process, outlines the potential of green hydrogen technologies, and discusses the stability of this technology and its appropriateness for India. Finally, as part of ongoing Indian government efforts to create an enabling green hydrogen ecosystem, Minister Jitendra Singh launched a national hydrogen portal at our summit today morning. At the same time, potential speed breakers remain in our path that would have to be overcome. So for example, there is a shortage of qualified engineers who can install, monitor, operate, and maintain integrated fuel cells and hydrogen systems. Capacity building is a major concern. Indeed, establishing centers of excellence seeks to put in place capacity building across the entire value chain in hydrogen. There are also potential safety hazards that would need to be understood and guarded against, including through conduct of risk assessments and safety studies. In the India-Norway context, the envisaged centers of excellence in hydrogen 
would need to be a cooperative effort between government bodies, industry, research institutions, academia, indeed all stakeholders.